In this video, we will be looking at keybinds. In particular, I will be actively in practice showing you how I keybind my own action bars for Summoner, Reaper and Sage with no prior practice for Endwalker. I will also be doing this in a single take, so bear with me. On your left, you will see that I have my uh, keyboard and mouse settings set up so that you can reference them if you find that useful. Let's start with um, the summoner. Obviously, we would choose Ruin on the first slot because it is our most default spammable spell. Carbuncle is a spell that we will be using very rarely so I'll put this far away, which means that it will not be as easy to use, but that is fine. In the same fashion, we'll put Radiant Ages on a button like 8, which I easily access with my mouse. Physic is not a particularly useful spell, as I have probably mentioned before, but uh, it is worth having in case you do need it for any reason. Aether Charge automatically upgrades to its later variants, and I would imagine that we would want to use that very regularly, so for now, let's put it here. Summon Cup with Summon Ruby Carbuncle is going to be used very regularly too. So, because I know some of the things that will happen based on the UI, that we will probably place Ruby around here. And Gemshine functions as a stronger version of Ruin, so there's a good reason to place it on Shift 1. Energy Drain. I know that I jump ahead a little bit, but Energy Drain, uh, because it is the Aetherflow producer, makes sense to place on L1 and Fester on L2, as they work together in this way. That is at least how I see it. Let's jump over to roll actions for a moment. Adel as a defensive cooldown in a way for your party makes sense to have on your action bars. I would recommend some button that you don't use that much. Sleep as a new button, I don't have like an immediate suggestion, but I would think somewhere like here. Perhaps like here. But the reason why we go to roll actions is because swift cast is very important to pair with resurrection. Next, we get Summon Topaz and Summon Emerald, which then automatically makes sense in this system that I've already started on over here. And Outburst, being an AoE alternative to Ruin, makes sense to place here for now. And Precious Brilliance is an AoE version of Gemshine, so in the same vein, it makes sense to place it here for now. Perhaps, in fact, we should swap these. This looks better. Ruin 2 is an upgrade of Ruin 1, so we don't have to do anything about that. Pain Flare is an AoE version of Festa, so we place it up here. But on the other hand, Energy Siphon is an AoE version of Energy Drain, so maybe we have to push them all one step. Like this. Next, we have Dreadworm Trance that appears here. But that is an upgrade of Aether Charge. And Astral Flow, which is only available when we use Dreadworm Trance in the first place, so we can place it here. Ruin 4 is a rarely available spell, and it's only available once every time you use Energy Drain. So, in fact, we would probably want to place those together in some way. But for now, I'll place it here. Searing Light is a raid cooldown, and I personally like to have my raid cooldown here. Even though it looks like it's really, really far away, as you can see on my mouse, it is actually not that far away.
Next, we have in Kindle Bahamut. This one is only active when we have Bahamut, which also comes from Dreadworm Trans. So in this case, I would actually flip these and then add in Kindle Bahamut like this. So th Shift 3 and Shift 4 are only available after we use regular 4. Dry Disaster is just a direct upgrade of Outburst, so we don't have to do anything there either. All the other... wow! All of the other actions here are automatically placed in some way by using other actions. So the only thing left to do is to briefly put the remaining role actions. I do recommend placing Lucid Dreaming because you're probably going to spend some mana, especially on res. Surecast is also very good to have somewhere. That's it for Summoner at level 80. I hope this uh, works as some inspiration. Next, let's look at Reaper. So this one I might have a little bit less knowledge on, but uh, let's take it from the top. So Slice is of course the step 1 of your 1, 2, 3 combo, and Waxing Slice is your step 2. Shadow of Death, I already know, is like a buff you need, to, or debuff you need to reapply to your target regularly, so it makes sense to play to place it somewhere around here. Hub is a ranged attack, so you won't use it very much, so I would recommend placing it a bit further away. In my case, this is not that far away. On the other hand, I like to have movement abilities around these spots if they're available, so I will instead place this here, which puts it a little bit further away. In that regard, Hell's Ingress and Hell's Egress are forward and backwards respectively, so I will place them like so. So forward and backwards. Then we have Spinning Scythe, which is an AoE attack. I typically like to have my AoE attacks on 4, just 4 in general. You might have your own system, but it's very good to have like a system that you know regardless of what job you're playing. Infernal Slice is the step 3 to your 1 to 3 combo, and Wall of Death is the AoE version of Shadow of Death. And like you saw before, we have a defensive cooldown, so we place it here, just like with uh, Brilliant Ages. Here we have the step 2 to the AoE combo. So it lands here automatically. Bloodstalk is a unique ability for the Reaper specifically. Um, I would recommend placing it on maybe 5. I imagine that it might get used a bunch at some specific point. And it also works very well with it having an AoE alternative, so this like mirrors the 4 button. Soul Slice is a relatively long cooldown, all things considered, so I think it's very safe to place it here, at least for now. You will see a bit later why that may come into become an issue. Soul Scythe is an AoE version of Soul Slice, so we'll place it next to it. And this is when the issue arrives. Gibbet, Gallows and Guillotine, I know already, will be spammed quite a lot at a higher level, um, at least the buttons, so they need to be easily accessible. But the most accessible buttons are all already kind of taken, so the best way I can see making this work is by moving these buttons around like this. So we have the single target versions and the AoE versions. That's, this means that we then have the space to have Gibbet and Gallows. Personally, eh, I think it's fine. You might have a different preference in which order they are. Um, there's also a little bit of a mismatch here with having an AoE attack on 3, but you can only fit so many buttons on 4. Let's uh, briefly look over these. Yeah, looks right. So then we have our second wind heal. Should probably be near Arcane Crest. Leg Sweep is a CC of some sort. Bloodbath is a defensive too. I would actually place it like here as like the healing button. And then we have Faint, I'll place it here. A bit like uh, with Edel. Arm's Length, I'll place here. It's around where Surecast landed. 
And true north, I happen to know, is not that important for Reaper. So I'll place it here. So you see, the Reaper was a bit quicker. Now, finally, let's take a look at Sage. And this is the one that I anticipate is going to be the most convoluted. So, let's start with Doses. I like to have my healer attack spells on this button. Specifically, I like to have the single target attack here, the damage over time effect here, and the AoE attack here. But um, I happen to know that Sage works a bit different. So Doses lands here for now. Diagnosis lands here, because it's the basic heal. And Cardia, I can imagine, will get used a lot more than you would originally think. So I will put it on 4 for now. It can be used a lot, but sometimes you won't, sometimes you will. So keep it near where you're going to be playing, but not like on your most important buttons. Prognosis being an AoE heal, I will place it here. Normally I would place it on 3, which I believe I do for most of my other healers, but for some other... for, for some buttons to be available, I think it's better to place it on two for now. So roll actions, repose we probably won't need. As sooner I always place on the same button and that's shift two. And the reason this is important is because as it is an, a universal spell for all healers, it's very important you know where it is. Sometimes you need to click it quickly, so you need to know where it is regardless of what you're playing. In Swiftcast, we do the same as we did with Summoner. Swiftcast, res. And I do the same system for all healers and every job that has a res, even Red Mage. Just to finish up, you know how much I harp on about Lucid Dreaming. I'll place it around here. It's not too far away, it's just good if you need to click it like once every minute. And then we move on to these. So, this is is quite literally Whispering Dawn from the, from the Scholar, and I have Whispering Dawn on 6, so it makes sense to place it on 6 for me. If you play Scholar, you might want to have a similar system, but maybe you want to invent a different system for your Sage. Flegma is an attack spell, and it's not a lot of range, but because it's both useful for single and AoE, I'll place it here for now. This is where it starts getting complicated. Eucrasia is probably something I'm going to use a lot, but not too much. So I think I'll place it on 5. I think it makes sense to place it on 2, but let's get back to that. Soteria is an ability that impacts Cardion directly, so it makes a lot of sense to place it with Cardion, at least for now. And Icarus is a movement spell, so I'll actually put it near Sprint. And this is where it starts making sense to move at least Prognosis, perhaps, or maybe not. Drucroll is a instant heal that spends Adder's Gall, so because it's an instant or at least a single target healing spell just like Diagnosis, I'll place it with Diagnosis. This crazy is the AoE attack, and in the advent that we don't have any dot to place, I'll place this here. I know that I will be clicking this button a lot. Caracol, uh, I know, is going to be an extremely useful button to press regularly, but I also know that I like to have that the sacred soil of the scholar on 8. On the other hand, I think it might be better to place it on 3 for now, due to how much I expect to use it. This is because at higher levels this gets a regen effect. Ixacol is an AoE heal, basically an instant version of uh, Prognosis. So I'll place this here, and I will actually flip these. Zoe makes your next actual healing spell more powerful, so it makes sense to place it around here, but uh, we're kind of taking all the spots. So what I'll do here is I'll just... I think that the regular use of Zoe is well enough that it will go well with Eucrasia, because Eucrasia also only affects spells. 
So these are like the spell modifier buttons. Pepsis technically also works with only spells. So if we place this here, this still makes sense. Physis, we already placed on six earlier. And Taracol is effectively the sage version of Excocutation from the Scholar. So I will place this here. It's an even stronger version of Druacol. Just it's basically Druacol on a cooldown and then more powerful. And then there's Toxicon. Since it's an attack, I'll place it over here. But uh, the system that we have is mostly that uh, it actually mo probably makes better sense to place it here. Because then these are the ranged attacks and these are the close attacks. Right? And then we have Haima. This ability is a bit strange, so I'm not quite sure how much I will use it. But for now, I'll place it here. I imagine, actually, that it's better to place it here, closer to diagnosis, because it's single target focused. Just to round these off, because we already fit everything here, I'll instead put, put your cast here. And rescue will go here, or perhaps here, to fit it with resurrect. So, in conclusion, you don't, you don't have to know exactly how you want to use every single spell before you choose to use it or place it, but you want to have an idea of what it works with and how you plan to use it. Placing an ability or a spell on your action bars is not like a finalizing choice. You can always change it if you feel like it works better elsewhere, but every time you move the button, you have to relearn your muscle memory. And finally, of course, you don't have to keybind everything. You can play with uh, mouse clicks if that works for you. Not everyone has a system like mine with a mouse and keyboard. But do what works best for you and then try to be consistent so you don't have to relearn your action bars every single day. Right? In So to round off with that, um Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or want advice on how you place your keybinds, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Aside from that, fun fact. Um, did you know that uh, the Physis 1 um, tooltip on the website is 21 seconds as of recording, which means that Physis 1 upgrades to a worse, worse ability, at least on the website. Anyway, that's a little fun fact. Thank you so much for watching.